Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up this week, we're going to talk about why you should be considering a three- or four-night sailing on Disney Cruise Line on this week's episode of the Disney Cruise Line Show. The Disney Cruise Line Show is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Receive a shipboard credit up to $1,500 when you let Dreams Unlimited help you plan your next Disney Cruise Line vacation. You'll get the same price as booking direct with Disney, plus you'll get the assistance of a Disney Cruise Line expert to answer all your questions and help make your next Disney cruise a magical one. Get a no-obligation quote at www.dreamsandlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, Dreams Unlimited Travel agent, Sean Falk. Hi. Via Skype. Oh, we're go- I'm, I'm literally going around the table, Craig. <laughs> Via Skype, Dreams Unlimited Travel agent, Mike Finucci. Hello, everyone. Uh, not Dreams Unlimited Travel agent, but amazing <laughs> editor on the Diz, Ms. Danny Hi. Sutherland. Hi there. And back in the production nook. Our producer, Mr. Craig Williams, oh, hi, hi. sporting a really, really nice haircut that I'm really liking. So dapper. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the show, folks. Just a couple things before uh, we get started. I want to remind everybody that you can subscribe to the Disney Cruise Line show on iTunes. Just go ahead and do a search for the DCL show or follow the links that are right below me if you are uh, viewing this on YouTube or you can head over to DizUnplugged.com for our show notes and links on uh, where to subscribe to all of our shows on iTunes. So this week, um, we thought we would talk about the argument to be made uh, for three and four night sailings. Now, uh, Sean, Denny, and I, along with my mom, Madeline, just got off uh, the Disney uh, the Disney Dream for a four night sailing. So that kind of, mm-hmm. you know, kind of reminded me of why. Um, before we get into that, Mike, uh, which sailings have yes. you do- which, which sailings have you done, Mike? I've done predominantly three night sailings um, in the past, so that's what I've mainly done uh, in conjunction with a land sea type of a vacation. Okay, and that's you know one of the one of the mm-hmm. arguments because we kind of did that. We did a couple nights at Old Key West uh, mm-hmm. prior to heading out to Port Canaveral and doing that, and that was really really nice. We actually didn't. Uh, with the exception of dinner at Jico one night, um, we really didn't leave Old Key West. We kind of hung out there mm-hmm. and chilled, and we ate at Olivia's, and we walked around, and, well, Sean and I worked. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, we were on our on our computers a lot, but um, mm-hmm. we kind of wanted to do that because that is certainly one of the, one of the ways to change things up. If you've been mm-hmm. going to Disney World for years and you want to do something a little different, um, Doing the land sea is is a nice option. Yes, a ni- sure. is a very nice option. But the the thing I tell first time cruisers, and I mean first time, not first time Disney cruisers, but first time cruisers, if you're not sure how you're going to be on a ship, mm-hmm. do a three night or a four night. Mm-hmm. Because if you get on the ship and you find out that you're really sensitive or you're not enjoying it or you know, you're getting, you know, seasick or something like that. You don't want to be on a seven night cruise. You don't yeah. want to be. And in that's, a... I was going to say, that's what started me because I have severe motion sickness related issues, um, like on rides and that sort of thing. Like it's a small world can get me, um, wow. which is sad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that was why the first cruise that I ever did was a three night with Disney cruise line because we weren't sure. And I didn't want to be sick for more than, you know, a three day period to begin with. And, and yeah. how, how was it for you? Like, you know, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah. Um, the, the sailing that I, the last one that I did, we actually sailed through a storm the first night. Um, I was very nervous with that. Um, I was actually really good. We were in the rear of the ship too, on deck seven. Um, we had a standard inside stateroom that I booked really last minute, um, for it. And, um, I didn't have too many issues. Um, the rest of my travel party had more issues, um, after the bars than I had most of the time. So um, that was basically the the way that that went. And I didn't have any issues really that night that we had. So it was really good. Um, yeah, I. Uh, it's funny because 
on certain rides and things like that. I've had bus rides where I've gotten motion sick. Mm -hmm. um, I've never, I have been in 30 foot swells on a Disney ship. It was one of the most frightening experiences of my life. Imagine. We were uh, at the end of a Mediterranean cruise years ago, and the captain misjudged where the storm was. And we ended up going through this. I mean, when I tell you, they were yelling for people to get off the deck. And the, 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 the cabinets that are on deck that hold the towels and mm. stuff, the wind was so bad, it was literally tearing the doors off of these cabinets. And they were flying oh. around. Oh, my word. Um, uh, water was coming down the, the stairwells. Oh my. The ship was doing this. I was fun. My, yeah. my, my, my partner at the time, Walter, was not. He was not I okay. I would have been like, I've he seen was, this movie. It doesn't end well. Yeah, really. I go. Um, there's not enough life. There's not enough I <laughs> no. have. Um, but so, you know, that's one of the considerations. If you're someone, if you just don't know. If you just don't know, a three or four night right. sailing mm -hmm. is a great way to kind of dip, uh, dip your toe in the water. Um, the other thing I thought about, um, you know, on seven night sailings, generally speaking, I want to get off the ship. They're going to ports. I want to go see. The busiest a ship will be on a port day is at Nassau because Nassau is kind of a one and done deal. For a lot of people, mm -hmm. they'll do it once and they're like, okay, I don't need to do that again. So the ship, if the ship is your destination and you want to go to Castaway Key, mm -hmm. um, I think a three and four night is a good option. Uh, I'm not a fan of Nassau. I don't know too many people who are. I don't know too many people that say, oh my God, I'm going on the ship because I really, really want to see Nassau. I've had it happen. Really? Yep. I had a whole thing with it once where, I mean, I, my very first cruise I ever did was on the Disney dream. I did a three night. It was actually a land and sea package. And uh, I specifically, I was nervous about, um, whether to, uh, I didn't want to get seasick or anything. I don't get motion sickness, but I was like, you never know. I don't, or I don't want to get there and like freak mm -hmm. out in the middle of the ocean and not be able to get off the ship. So I purposely picked one that was, uh, how to stop in Nassau, how to stop in Castaway Key. Cause I just thought, okay, well I'm essentially off the ship all day and then I'm only on it at night so I can really gauge. And, um, I did recently uh, book somebody because in my head, I'm like, three nights, that's the itinerary of it. And Disney happened to have one that did not have that stop in Nassau. It had a, it had stops in uh, at Castaway Key, and then the other day was just a sea day, which they do every now and then. And they were very upset that they were not stopping in Nassau. So yeah. we had to get it rearranged and, you know... I worked, that took a while, but because uh, it was a VGT status room, so you can't change those. Yeah. So oh, that was a big fix. But um, yeah, so well, and this this cruise that we were just on on the Dream that was my first time in Nassau, and so yeah, so um, you want you wanted yeah. to get off the ship. <laughs> I wanted to get off the ship and kind of experience it, so I could be able to to know and to be able to talk about it. And um, and I really I liked it. I don't know that I have to go. Like I don't I wouldn't book it just for Nassau. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be like, oh, I can't wait to get back to Nassau. But that being said, had a, a couple of great conversations with people um, in port that day and got to see some of the historical sites that are just around the port. So that was neat. It was still, you know, it is what you make of it, right? So mm -hmm. in in large part. So we, you know, got I got off the ship and enjoyed it. Well, well I, I'm sorry. sorry, Mike, go ahead. Oh, I, I was oh. going to jump in on that. I, you know, I don't have kids or anything yet, but I have to imagine one day when I do have kids that it'll actually be an okay stop because of Atlantis. And because mm -hmm. I know a lot of families do love the experience of going to Not Atlantis. Not when you look at what yeah. the price is. Uh, to go to Atlantis for the day and use that, because Atlantis is a, <clears throat> a resort on Paradise Island um, and uh, they have a water park mm -hmm. basically in the resort. But I believe the price was two hundred and twenty-five dollars per person. Um, is that through Disney, or is that that was through they, the shore excursion? Okay, that was a shore excursion, so I don't know what it is directly. But it was somewhere. I remember looking at the price, going, "Oh my god!" Yeah, a family of four is going to spend a thousand dollars to spend a day in a water park, unless that water park is like they're handing out gold doubloons. 
Um, I don't. Maybe they are. That's with the thousand dollar <laughs> package per person. So I, I mean, right. I've done it before. Um, I haven't done Atlantis with Disney, but I have with other cruise lines. Um, my first time I booked it through that cruise line, which was Norwegian. The second time I went, I just got a cab and went on my own because it was a lot cheaper to just show up and book it. But the issue I ran into with doing that was it was like. From the ship to get there, it's maybe a 10-minute drive, 15 minutes, something like that. And they charged about $8 to get there for my whole group. But on the way back, knowing that we needed to get back to the ship, they were trying to charge more like $30 or $40 for the group because they knew we needed to get back to our cruise ship. Yeah. Um, so they kind of like price gouged us to get back. So a lot of times when you get off at the port, they will say, oh, $10 to get you somewhere. But that doesn't mean that's what it costs to get you back. Wow. So And, you know... I'm actually looking up the prices now on uh, I'll, I'll do that in a second it's, it's a good point to bring up about the transportation from the port from if you're getting mm-hmm. into a you know a taxi that's sitting out there always make mm-hmm. them tell you what the price is before you get in the car yeah. always and that's not just true in the Bahamas that's true anywhere Absolutely. make them give you the price before you get in the car um, mm-hmm. so it's there is also a, a fairly decent strategy with Atlantis. Um, some of the, um, uh, if it is something you want to do, there are some of the surrounding um, hotels and resorts in the uh, Nassau area that do a thing where if you book a night in a hotel with them, they will give you four passes to the water park that is included. Um, those hotel, hotels usually run about $300 a night, $400 a night, um, but you get the four passes. So a lot of people will book the hotel. They go their first check-in to the hotel, get their tickets, and they have no intention of staying there, obviously, because they're getting back on the ship. Um, So then get their family foreign for a lot cheaper, but you you need to look those up. Okay. This is uh, uh, the pricing that I'm seeing for this Mm -hmm. water park. Um, Value season, which is from like from January through February and then the month of May, $135 per adult, $93 per child. Um, it goes up to as much as uh, $166 per adult and $103 per child. Um, of course, none of that includes transportation, so I think Disney is right. probably including the transportation yeah. in that. But there's also, you know, a combo combo packages that include lunch and dolphin experiences. That can go up as high as $289 per person. So um, I didn't look specifically at what the excursion was and what it included. But that's any way you shake it. Even at $135 per adult and $93 per child, that's an expensive day. Mm -hmm. That's an expensive day any way you look at it. Um, So... But Atlantis is probably the only reason I'd get off the ship in Nassau yeah. to go gamble because there's a casino yeah. in the hotel. Um, but outside of that, Nassau Day is really a pseudo sea day for a lot of people. And Disney knows this. So there's a lot more activities going on during the day in Nassau because they know they have more people on the ship. Mm-hmm. But if the ship is your destination and you want to see Castaway Key, Three and four night cruise is a great way to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, something else that uh, you know we're, we're we're coming up on the wish the new the newest Disney ship it's supposed to be announced opened up for booking sometime later this year. Uh, we know we've been told it's not going to be in September when they do the normal winter 2022 release that it's going to have its own separate release, um, but. What a lot of people have, and you've been telling me this, other agents have been telling me this, you've got people trying to build up their castaway club status so that mm-hmm. they can get early, you know, that early access when they open it up. Because mm-hmm. if you're platinum castaway club, you get first dibs, then gold, then silver, then general public, which just kind of went through that. Um, so three and four night sailings, because Disney doesn't do it like other cruise lines, other cruise lines. By the number of nights you've sailed is how they determine your status. Disney does it by the number of sailings. So a three-night sailing counts as much towards your castaway club status as an 11-night Mediterranean cruise Right, uh, it, it contributes to your status. So if you're trying to build up status and get to platinum or even gold, 
Um, and so there, there are a shocking amount of people that are doing that. Like that's why I'm, that's why I threw yeah. it in here yeah, because I mean, I'm people, hearing a lot. People do message, and they're. Like, I mean, I have mm-hmm. a, a couple that's never had never done a, a Disney cruise at all, and they want to do that. They want to be platinum to get on the Wish and the other ships that are going to be. Release. Okay, well, they got a lot of sailing Holy to do between been, now and now. Oh, they've been doing it. And I, I told oh, her at the beginning, I was like, come on, like, I'll, we'll put, I'll get you yeah. on 10. That's fine. Like, let's go. I'll, <laughs> I'll find 10 dates for you. So, like, we'll, we'll go. Oh, let's amazing. do it. So, wow. Um, it's also uh, one of the things I thought this is more for Florida locals or drive market people. Yeah. Um, it's a great long weekend Friday, Saturday, Sunday on a three night. Just kind of want to get yeah. away. Um, uh, I keep saying I'm going to do that in a three night, and I haven't yet. Um, it's been so long since I've done a three night. I, like my first one was a three night, first cruise I ever did, and first Disney cruise as well was a three night. And you know the downside of these shorter cruises is they're short, mm. and that yeah. you yeah. know. The four nights a little bit better because you have that extra sea day, mm-hmm. but you know on a three night don't unpack, mm-hmm. don't unpack right. because as yeah. soon as you're unpacked you got to pack again. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You're on and off. You're on and off the ship so fast. Yeah, okay. And that's you know, but you got you know got the spa, you got the dining. We're going to talk about all of those experiences mm-hmm. in the review that we're doing um, as this month. Uh, I guess right. because we record these, we record about a month's worth of shows in one sitting. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So one of the shows we're recording today is going to be our review of mm-hmm. our experience on board the Dream. Um, there, there is a lot to there's a lot to be said for for doing these shorter cruises and um, I, like you were saying with the driving distance to it. I've gotten. Uh, phone calls from people that are like, we're in the car on our way down right now. Um, we, If you can find us a Disney cruise for three or four nights under this budget, we're going there. If not, we're driving to Disney World. Like, we're on our way, and we just got to pick which way we're That's going. That's insane. Okay, people so do stuff like that. That yep. brings up a really good question and something I've wondered. Mm-hmm. Like, how far in advance do you need to book okay. a three or four night? I, I, like, I, can you... I want to say this. I want to yes. say this because I, I, I looked at some numbers this morning okay. before we set, came in. Looked at some numbers this morning, and I was stunned. Um, It is cheaper right now for me to book Mm -hmm. a three-night sailing next week than it is for (laughs) me to book one in September of 2021. Um, Interesting. That I was seeing for a veranda stateroom. Mm -hmm. um, I was seeing about $1,800 for two people. Yeah. Um, it depends. It went. It varied between eighteen hundred and twenty three hundred, um, depending on what date this yeah. month. Yeah, yeah. We're doing. We're recording this in March of twenty twenty. Um, but when I was looking at September, I was seeing like the cheapest one was like twenty two hundred for a veranda stateroom, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, that's weird. Yeah, hmm. that's weird. Um, even, and some of these could have been guaranteed in guarantee status right. as well. Some are guaranteed. I mean, even I mean. Just speaking on that, I mean, yesterday I, I was able to get on and they were having IGT and OGT statuses, which is like a guaranteed status um, for a couple of the Alaska sailings already for this year. Uh-huh. Um, they won July 6th that's in uh, that's that category or whatever. That's a seven night. So they, they do. Um, Let's just remind people what we're talking about when we talk about IGT, <laughs> OGT, and VGT. I'll let yeah, you know. uh, it's essentially um, you're in that category. So if you book VGT, um, you would get a veranda, but you don't have any control over where that's going to be located. You essentially don't have any say. You can't cancel. You can't modify. You can't um, do any of these types of things traditionally so um but they are good they're good price you also don't get your stateroom assigned until right before you cruise right right and Um, you can't most of the time you can't say i'd like a connecting room as you don't have you can't you, that weight isn't there to be able to... Right. But know. if you're going to book last minute, it's really not yeah. a big deal to do it anyway. If you're booking for two weeks from now or three weeks from now, I mean, you're already in a situation where you can't cancel anyway, yeah. so it makes sense yeah. to do it. Um, it's a it's a good option. Yeah, and it is. It's, especially if you live in Alabama or Georgia or South Carolina, even in Tennessee, I've had my mom do that where she woke up and was like, I'm joining you on this cruise and the cruise leaves in 24 hours. It's a 12 hour drive from there. So See, and I mean, a lot of my feet and feet to get there. And, so. and to be honest, a lot of the cruises I do yeah. are relatively last minute. Yeah. Um, I live here. 
I live here, so and I also do this for a living, so taking time off from work isn't a problem for me. But, um, you know, it is an option. Is there anything else? Is there anything else? Because I've gone through my list. Yeah, and I know we're going to go more into detail when we talk about um, just our overview of our sailing. But as someone who, um, up until this point, we had taken 10 seven-night cruises. And so going into this, I was a little, I, I just wanted to know how a four-night cruise felt because I know what the seven nights feel like and I have plenty of time to unwind and I have plenty of time like there feels like that that buffer well, now this was a working. work cruise you were working <laughs> this was okay different. we were working our butts off on this cruise this was different all the way around but um mm-hmm. but just that sea day and you made mention of the sea day that um because and having it on the dream itinerary right now, it's the last full day on the ship. So even if the first part, first day or two felt like it was going faster than it would normally go if you're used to a seven night, just to know you had that sea day well, buffer that, at that, the end. But that does change depending on the sailing. So there are some mm-hmm. okay. where the sea Sometimes day is your first day. Okay. You, you know, your first okay. full day is a sea day. Mm-hmm. And then it's Nassau and Castaway. Sometimes it's... Yeah. You know, sea day is your last day. Yeah, but it's still nice to have. It is sure that you have that that time period and stuff. And like we still had, um, you know, our full. It was great at Castaway Key. There is always the the chance that you may not, if there's strong winds or rough seas or anything, that they they will not go to Castaway Key, which is always upsetting whenever it happens. Um, But there is always those possibilities that stuff like that happens. But luckily, you know. It, did, it didn't come up for our cruise, right. but there there have been times where it does happen. Yeah. Yep. I just, I think it's a perfect option for people who like a fast-paced vacation, you know, for a lot of people who enjoy Disney parks. They don't say they go to visit Disney parks because they like a nice, relaxing vacation. It's it's an experience, and that's for, mm-hmm. for seven-night cruises, nothing against them, especially when it's the only way to do stuff like Alaska. But I, on a seven night Caribbean cruise, I get bored halfway through. Whereas mm-hmm. on three and four, I am never bored at all. Okay, I, I, I just eat those never up. bored. I'm never bored on one of those ships. I'm not on any cruise, really. I never get bored. Um, I, I actually, it's, I have a hard time relaxing. Mm-hmm. And if I'm going to relax, it's going to be on a cruise. Um, well, for me. we were talking about the price earlier and, um, there is an element to, uh, you know, I, I did have a family recently that was like, we're torn on whether we want to do a cruise or whether we want to go to Disney world. And they tend to stay in deluxe accommodations. And, you know, the big thing this year has been Riviera opening and they were like, we want to see, and we want to experience Riviera. And I told them as I was pricing it out, it was cheaper for me to put them on a three night Disney cruise than it was for me to put them in a, a room only at the Riviera for this exact same three nights nights that they wanted to do that that room because it was it was over six hundred dollars a night for the for the, and that was just a standard room it wasn't like a one bedroom or anything and i could put them in a veranda on a three night disney cruise for the exact same price the same dates in september wow. so i said you do have i mean and that includes your food and all this stuff they're 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 Riviera stay didn't even have their park tickets or anything or food or any of that stuff. So I said, you know, it is something to look into if you're used to like deluxe pricing and accommodations on, on the hotels side. All right. What about you, Mike? Anything you want to add before we close? Um, I was going to say one of the issues that, that I have is I don't know how to come to Florida without going to the park. So the three night, four night is perfect. Cause I have to go to one of the theme parks. Um, so uh, I, I've I've done a couple out of there that were longer, but I do you um, pre- do you prefer to do the cruise first and then the parks or the parks and then the cruise? Parks and the cruise. The cruise is so relaxing. If you do it the other way around, you've basically invested in something and thrown it away. Yeah. With how yeah. The, with how the parks are. So um, and as much time that I can be in, in the rainforest room, that's. That's my NASA day. So, and the rainforest yeah. room is is an option in the spa. You can mm-hmm. get um, a day pass or a cruise mm-hmm. cruise pass. They've got you know saunas mm-hmm. and steam rooms and the terracotta the lounges, terracotta heated lounges, mm-hmm. and the whirlpools and things like that. Um, I've always recommended to people um, uh, do uh, do your land portion first and then your cruise, mm-hmm. as well because uh, for the main reason that. When you do the cruise first and everything's included, all your entertainment, your food, all that stuff, and then you go to World and you got to pay for everything, mm-hmm. it's jarring. 
it's jarring. So I think it's better to do the world portion first. But every, every, you know, there are people who swear by uh, doing world after after cruise. There's no wrong answer. But all right, mm-hmm. um, if you're interested in having either Sean Falk or Mike Finucci help you with your next Disney Cruise Line vacation, there are links in our show notes to their agent pages where you can reach out and say hello. And that is going to do it for this episode of the Disney Cruise Line Show. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again next week. Have a great week, folks.